Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. This spring and fall we're hosting a whole brand new series of workshops for teachers for math, science, English, and history. You should check out these workshops. We're going to be holding them in Massachusetts, in Florida, in New York, in California. Check them out. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Take care. Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. Today we're going to do number 40 on the CBEST Elementary Math Practice Test as part of the Go Math 2015 Teacher Workshop Series. Number 40 goes through some uh, core ideas with place value and uh, with decimals, particularly with place value with decimals. So let's take a look at number 40. Notice here we do have um, numbers all in decimals and if we wanted to think about these numbers and know the place value we usually think about that first digit after the decimal sign as if I were to write out this one, this number here, 0 0.1234. This first digit here is one tenth. This second digit is in the hundredths. The three digits in the thousandths. And the four digit is in the ten thousandths. So when I read this one here, I'd actually read it as 1,234 ten thousandths. And this, if it was just the, uh, if it was just 0 0.123, I would read it as 123 thousandths. And then uh, if it was just the 0 0.12, I would read it as 12 hundredths. Now guess what? We usually, when we see numbers like these, we don't really think about them in terms of 51 thousandths or uh, 38 hundredths. So I'm going to go about another way of solving this, but just wanted to review that. Okay, now we're going to go on to solve the problem. It says, if the value of x is between 51 ten thousandths and 38 hundredths, which of the following could be true? And then we have some options. Now, I, I said this a little earlier, I'm not going to go into, you know, dealing with place value and getting trapped in dealing with you know place value. What I'm going to do is a strategy to make this problem a lot easier. And what the strategy is, is I'm going to take this value here and I'm going to multiply it by a thousand. Uh, actually, I'm going to multiply it by 10,000. Or let's think of it this way. I'm going to move the decimal over four spaces. One, two, three, four spaces. That's the same as multiplying this decimal by 10,000. What, what happens is when I do that, it becomes 51. I'm going to do the same thing for this one and move it over four spaces. One, two, three, four. And you got to remember to add in a zero. And when you multiply that by 10,000 or move the decimal over four spaces, it becomes 380. So now I'm dealing with 51 and 380. Let's do the same thing for all these. I'm multiplying it by 10,000 which is the same as moving the decimal over four spaces. And we're going to now have values that are a little bit more manageable to work with. Even if you're not used to multiplying by 10,000, you can see it has four zeros, so that's moving it over four spaces. One, two, three, four spaces over. This becomes a 42. This one becomes a 261. This one that's three spaces. A fourth space, I'd add the zero. It'd become a 49. And I do the same thing for this one. One, two, three, four. This becomes, that's not a 49. I'm sorry, 490. This one is uh, 520. And this one, when I multiply it by 10,000, I'm actually adding in two zeros. It becomes 600. Now, what I've just done is I've made this problem a lot more concrete. That way, when I evaluate what number, which number is between 51 and 380, it's a lot clearer. I mean, isn't it clear? 42 is definitely not there. 600, that's too small. 600, 520, 490 is too large. 260 is the only one that fits in that range. All right, team, the answer is B. Now, I know that I went about solving this problem and you know, I kind of sidestep the whole issue with dealing with uh, all the place value. I want you to know how to read these numbers. And I want you to watch the beginning part of this video to know that this is the tenths, hundredths, thousands, ten thousandths place. 
This is true, but I also want you to have a strategy to solve problems like this fast and efficiently, and I think this way definitely works. The answer is B. I hope you like it, team. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.